every year you and I talk, whether it's in Charlottesville, whether it's at the Peach Jam, whether it's about now, and every year you're like, we're not that good. You, you have us overrated. You have us overrated. Last year, I didn't have you in the top 25, and Virginia fans crushed me. How, how good is this team going to be, Tony? Is this the same deal where you're trying to temper any expe expectations? I think you're probably ranked lower this year than you have been any year the last four or five. Yeah, I mean, this is – I mean, I was looking at the facts. I, I mean, expectations, all that, that stuff's going to be there. It's not. It's, it's what you do. That's kind of irrelevant. But this is probably our most inexperienced team in terms of Kihei Clark's our only player that's played multiple years with a lot of experience. We, we played a freshman last year, Reese Beekman, who, um, you know, those two fit so well with um, Jay Huff, Sam Hauser, and Trey Murphy. And I'm excited for all those guys, but Trey Murphy, we, we, Trey was going to redshirt. He didn't even know. He didn't even, we got to say, look, you, you got it for a year so you can play and then you'll have next year. But, um, you know, obviously we weren't expecting him to go and he absolutely made the right decision. Had a great summer league and was picked 16th, I think 17th. Crazy. Um, yeah. But, um, but, you know, besides Kihei, we got Reese, we, no one else. So we have two transfers that are going to help us. Um, Armand Franklin and Jaden Gardner, one played at Indiana, one played at East Carolina that have experience. And then everyone else is pretty, even if they've been in our program, they really haven't played much of those through injuries or stuff. So it's just kind of a new group that, you know, you start forging your identity and seeing, I really don't know. I, I, uh, it'll be a different team. We lost our perimeter shooting, um, you know, three really good perimeter shooters, but, um, you know, we got two guards that have experience and I like that. And then the transfers have experience. Um, it's just, but they're new to us. So I really don't know. And I, and I'm pretty much that way all the time. I'm never certain, but um, we got work to do. I'm real about that, but we won't back down from anything and we'll see where it goes. And it's just, it doesn't really matter if I think we're going to be really good or not. It's going to be how you develop and improve. Coach, you mentioned those three guys you lose. They're, they're your top three scorers. What, what offensively do you think you guys will look like this year? Yeah, I think, you know, at times we're going to have to use some ball screens um, because I think Kihei and Reese are good off the ball screen and they're quick and can make some plays. Um, you know, what I've seen some guy, you know, we'll, um, we'll have a balance. I think hopefully we'll be a bit more this year. I mean, you have to look at this, but more physical this year. You're going to see some more physicality. Last year we were okay defensively, but that wasn't one of our best defense teams. So we're going to have to really dig in and, and, and be good defensively, you know, offensively use some physicality. Um, I think we scored a little more last year. I'm sure the people who don't like our style may hate it worse this year. So um, <laughs> tell them to not tune in. And if that's the problem for them, but you have to figure out ways to, to be physical, to get good shots, you know, and, and maybe the margin of error right now might be a little smaller than it's been. And that's okay. Uh, you just take these guys, but I like it. I think it's what will become at the end of the year and um, building it, that'll be with this team. But I hope it's a more physical team that guards hard. Um, and I do hope we can run the floor. We got some bigs that'll really run the floor. And that's the a little bit concerning, but also kind of the exciting challenge thing. We're going to have to be a little different this year and figure out ways to manufacture some things offensively and defensively. So it's not going to be like last year. We really tried to spread the floor and let our you know, our fives, Jay Huff and Sam Hauser and Trey, I mean, they were all almost, well, those two were almost 40% shooters. Jay was in the mid thirties. We're a little more rugged this year, traditional with our, our forwards and centers. And they were men, Tony. I mean, they were older yeah. Hauser and yeah. Jay Huff. Now, like you said, you've got guards at least that are, that are experienced Kihei and, and Franklin comes over and, and Reese has a year of starting under his belt. But like those, the bigs, other than Gardner, I assume you don't, you don't have much, much of a feel yet. Do you? Right. Not at all. I, you know, I think, but that's okay. I think the competition will reveal that. So it's really a, you know, there's been some workouts in the fall. Where like we got a ways to go and there's been flashes where they've looked good. And, um, you know, I don't know what the league will be like this year. I mean, the league's always solid. Last year it was down a little bit. I, I say that. Um, doesn't mean it was a bad league. It was just, it was down. Wow. Um, I've never heard, wait, wait. I've never heard a coach say that about their league ever. Everybody always says their, their league's the greatest, maybe during the year, you know, yeah, you say yeah, that's right. Right. <laughs> no, it was, I mean, we look, our guys, that doesn't take away from our guys winning the regular season ACC championship. That was amazing for them. And then, but, um, it just, 
when you had three one seeds in years past, I mean, I've, Robbie, you, I've been in leagues where they've been dominant. I mean, if you can't look at a league and say it's not as good as it's been, and maybe that's college basketball. Maybe that is. I, I don't know. But it just was compared to other years, it was a bit down. So, um, yeah, maybe, you, yeah, probably you don't say that during the year. It's after the fact. It's not going to hurt anybody's <laughs> NCAA chances, right? Nope. That's, that's right. Stuff doesn't matter anyways. Let's be real. <laughs> so. <laughs> Coach, you, you mentioned those transfers. I feel like people have seen Armand Franklin, Jaden Gardner, maybe not so much. I, I've done a couple of his games when he was at East Carolina. I've seen him go for 30 at Wichita State. Um, oh. How impressed have you been, I guess, just with his ability to score it? He's not huge. No. He's, well, he's strong. He's thick. He's buddy 6'6". Six, yeah. six. Well, I, I don't know what he's, he's listed a, at. He's, he's a undersized. But I like guys like that. He just kind of finds the basket. He's on the glass. He has touch that's going to be important for us because we lost so much scoring, you know, we don't return hardly any scoring. Kihei is our leading scorer. Um, and I think, you know, to get baskets in different ways, um, you know, everybody said, well, he's, he might get swallowed up against the length of the ACC. Um, I just got a feeling, you know, watching Jaden playing, he, he's figured out ways his whole career and he wanted, he was so excited about this opportunity to come and play in a league like the ACC and just see, and he's needed. I think when you bring in transfers, you know, it's good that you, you want them, especially if they have experience, like to be able to step in and have a significant role. And, you know, they're both going to have to have that just the way our roster is. So there'll be ample opportunity. You know, there's adjustments. He's been well prepared at East Carolina. They didn't have a lot of success. They were close, but um, so he's hungry to try to be a part of a team and just keep building it. And, um, but they did a good job developing and he had to do a lot for them. And I think, you know, he'll have some responsibility here. We're going to need that versatility in his scoring, um, playing different ways. And the same thing with Armand, you know, again, Archie and that staff did a great job. And he he ran some stuff. Arch, um, Indiana played somewhat of our defensive system. So sure. Some concepts were similar. And even offensively, he could he can move and shoot a little bit. And that's where we, we need some of that outside shooting that uh, we lost that um, is probably going to be important for us. So they both have great opportunities to come in and, and help us this year. So what, what's the biggest key, Tony, to, to still finishing at or near the top of the ACC this year? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we're going to have to be a, a rugged, tough defensive team. You know, it's, it's funny. I, I, I got a text and we're starting our practice today. And my dad, he just texted me. I, he um, I talked to him for a couple of days and he texted me something. He said, I can remember for the 40 years I was in coaching, I always loved the first day because he said, I always felt like, um, where I would sit in front of the team and try in words to clearly explain to them what I saw them becoming, what their identity could be, and paint that picture of this is what I see you as. And I think that's important that a team has a clear identity of maybe you aren't that right away. No team is that. Maybe some of the teams experienced are. But, but really saying this is what I see in you, and this is what we work towards daily and keep going through the ups and downs. And I think – our team has to become a rugged physical team that is really good defensively. And when I say really good to the best of our abilities with new guys, last year we were okay, but not where we've been in the past. I liken it a little more to after the national championship year when we had, you know, Momady and Braxton Key, and we just, we found a way. I think we finished second that year. It was the COVID year, but boy, we got better as the year went on and we really guarded hard. We won games with our defense. And then, you know, just becoming a team that doesn't back down that I, I told our team, I, I said, we, we're not a blue blood. I said, don't ever mistake us for, we're not a blue, we're a blue collar program. And there's a big difference in my opinion. That doesn't mean anything to do, have anything to do with who's better, who's not championships, not no, don't make that mistake. I want guys that have a blue collar approach. And I'm not saying the blue bloods don't have that approach, but I want that. And that's why I point to my Rocky poster all the time. I want guys that want to come in and they they're so excited and hungry about the chance to go toe to toe and fight against the best in a league like the ACC and contend for championships. And they don't, they aren't entitled to anything. They don't assume. And it's a conflicting message because now at Virginia, we have, you know, people, all these athletes, they get worship. Oh, you're the greatest. You're this and that. no, you're a team that has lost a lot of its players. You come in, enjoy this process, and be blue-collar in your approach. And that 
that's, I guess, the identity I want to paint and then get into the specifics of what that's going to look like, um, you know, for this team on the court. And that's why that was a great reminder for my dad about, you know, that's the job in that first day. He always got excited about that. And then you stay, stay faithful to it. You, you talked about the inexperience. Is that your biggest concern with, with this group? Yeah, I, I think some of that, and, and although, you know, guys play, there, there's that inexperience. And then, you know, I think our ability from the perimeter, our, our outside shooting, you know, we just haven't, that we lost so much shooting and that really won us some games. So um, now guys have really worked and improved on their shots and all that, but just that, that, that on paper, you'd say, well, where's your perimeter scoring? Where's your shooting come from? And so that could cause some issues, but um, that's why you're going to have to be good in those other areas. doesn't mean we won't, but it just, that's a uncertainty. So that along with the inexperience, even, you know, Sam redshirt a year, when you have guys in your system that know how to, how to do the things that equate to winning, we don't have that as much as that inexperience of players that have played in practice. All right. Well, listen, we, we appreciate you joining us for a few, Tony. You got Robbie up early in San Diego. Right. So now he's got to hit the zoo or do something. I, I don't know what he's going to do. but he's wearing that hat. He better have some Red Bull, and he should be good yeah. to go and alive. Yeah. So there's no issues there. <laughs> listen, we appreciate it. Good luck, and uh, hope to see you in Charlottesville uh, soon. Sounds good. See you guys. Take care, man. Take care. Thanks, Tony. Thank Before we move on, let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up for Bet Rivers yet, now is the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their rush pay and some approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, it's more secure, and it's more reliable. Now that basketball season is tipping off, get in on the action at betrivers.com today or by downloading the Bet Rivers iOS app. You must be 21 years or older. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And while I got you here, let's talk about the Field of 68 Media Network, where college basketball matters most all year round. This is a digital media and podcast network that we've been building over the course of the last year. We have shows hosted by some of your favorite players covering the program that they love the most. AJ Guyton hosts the House of Hoosier. Eric Devendorf covers Syracuse on the scorer's table. Dan Dickow hosts the Gonzaga Bulldog broadcast. We have Florida's Patrick Young and Duke's Andre Dawkins and North Carolina's Shimon Williams and Michigan's Stu Douglas and Illinois' Deion Thomas. The list goes on and on and on. We have more than 30 shows right now. So hit the links below and check them all out. And while you're at it, make sure that you go check out the Field of 12 Media Network, your home for college football. All right, that was Virginia head coach Tony Bennett. And now uh, we turn to two guys that know the team well that delve deeper into the Virginia Cavs. And that is uh, Jeff White, first formerly of the Richmond Times Dispatch, spent two plus decades there. Now has worked for the website at Virginia for the last uh, since 2009. And also a familiar face, certainly uh, Jim Miller, color analyst for the team, uh, played for the Cavs back in the uh, I guess the first year of the glory days, uh, the Ralph Sampson teams in the, in the mid eighties. So uh, thanks guys for joining me to try to figure out this Virginia team, which is not that easy to figure out. Um, Jeff, I'll start with you, you know, new faces uh, everywhere. There's new faces this year because of the transfer portal and, and the one-time transfer uh, deal. But this Virginia team, obviously you are losing Hauser, you're losing Huff. You kind of knew those guys, we're going to be gone. Nobody knew Trey Murphy was going to be gone uh, this quickly and, and go that high in the NBA draft. What do you think you've seen a little bit of this group so far this year? What do you think are realistic kind of expectations for this group? You know, that that's a great question. And, and I can honestly say, I don't know. I'm, I'm confident that, you know, Tony Bennett will build a good defensive team out of this group. Eventually. I don't know. I don't know how good it will be defensively, you know, game one, I'm sure it will improve, but you know, there's never been a season like another season like this one at UVA since Tony's been here with this much turnover, you know, this many new faces, guys who have to come in and contribute right away. Uh, you know, most Tony Bennett teams have had the luxury of having 
returning veterans that he could count on and you have a new group and you know if you get something from that group it's great but you're not necessarily depending on all your new guys to contribute and contribute significantly so this team is different in that regard i mean 80 percent of the scoring from last season is gone and uh i mean i haven't gone back to check but i doubt very much that there's been another year tony has come into a new season having to replace 80 percent of his scoring and Tony also always, uh, like he just did, tries to, you know, temper the expectations. Nobody's better about that of saying, why are we ranked this high? I don't think we're that good, this, that, and the other. Is this the year that he may be right? Because, again, you've got Kihei Clark, who's a great piece. We know that. Like, great leader, great everything, defender, all that. But, obviously, you can't ask him to do too much on the offensive end in terms of scoring, Jim. Um, you, you just have so many question marks. You know, Beekman's got to step up. Uh, the, you know, transfer from ECU, uh, Jaden Gardner's got to be put up similar numbers maybe to what he did in, you know, a, a, for a bad ECU team. We don't know how that's going to translate. Trey Murphy, it translated. A bad Rice team, he came over and was, and was good, but he was a piece. This kid may have to come over and be the guy. What, what do you think of this year's group? Yeah, I mean, all those are key pieces for sure that they've lost. And now you've got these new guys that are relatively unknown coming into a system that is just that. It's a system. And uh, learning that system is not easy for, for uh, uh, a new guy in particular. Um, but you, you made some, some, you know, you listed some names there that are, I think it's too early to kind of tell, but Let's start with the backcourt and, and Reese Beekman and Kihei Clark. I think they both have been working on their shots and, and improved their shots. Uh, I, I'm not a big fan of having to have your point guard generate a lot of points for you. And, and Kihei, what made Kihei so great early is he had the, the ability to, to distribute the basketball to um, guys like Ty Jerome and Kyle Guy and, and, and DeAndre Hunter. But uh, I think Cody Statman is a guy a lot of people aren't talking about, but I think he's stepped up his improvement. How will he perform once the lights are on and you get the crowd out there? Um, but the two guys that you, you referenced, I think, uh, you know, Jaden Gardner, who, who really he scores well in and around the interior and at the rim, uh, very productive at ECU. He's a fantastic player who's going to, what is he, 6'6 six, six and change and 243. And like he's every bit of 243, he's all mountain muscle. Yeah. And he can use that size and strength inside. I think when you look at, well, and let me say, couple that with Armand Franklin, who, who right. played at a higher level at Indiana, and his ability to come in and maybe you know, at 6'6, six, six, stretch the floor, and, and uh, he can score as well. But here's the thing that I like about this team. I compare them maybe to 2019-20, uh, uh, that Virginia team who coming off, they lost a lot of guys and then were uh, trying to figure out who they were early on. They lost some games that they probably shouldn't have lost to at Boston College, uh, NC State. Syracuse, I think they lost those games. But you look at how that team finished down the stretch. I mean, they molded together. I think this team could be a lot like that. I think this team will play harder, play tougher, and have better chemistry than what we saw last year. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think you're right. I mean, listen, their backcourt, their perimeter, I, I don't think it's really the question. I, I don't. I mean, again, Armand Franklin's going to help. He can score a little bit with those two guards that aren't great shooters yet. And hopefully Kihei can just become a, a, a dependable when they leave him open, make a few open shots. But it, it really is up front. And, and Gardner's got to be good. And then who else helps him? Ultimately, Jeff, like who else up front is going to – because that can't be it. They need some length up front to go with Gardner. Gardner's not a – like, you know, like Jim was saying, he, he's kind of a wide body – undersized four man which is fine but you need a little length and protection rim protection who gives them that 
Yeah, I mean, there are two traditional fives on the roster. There's Francisco Cafaro, who was on the Argentina's Olympic team this summer, did not play a lot, did not was not expected to play a lot going in. Uh, he has battled injuries here. He's a big, tough kid, kind of in the Jack Salt vein. Uh, Caden Shedrick is another kid who battled mono all last year, never really got healthy, showed some flashes. He's more skilled than Kafaro is. You know, they're both long, right around seven feet. Uh, they can help defensively. Neither has shown, you know, yet that he's capable of, of being productive consistently right. on offense. So there is a lot of pressure on Gardner. He is very much an undersized in terms of height, four man or five man in, in today's game. He's, as Jimmy said, he's very strong. I mean, he is a man out there. You when you watch them practice, you see him, and he looks different than the other guys physically in terms of muscles. But, you know, there's a there's a first-year guy, Igor Milicek, from Europe, uh, who the staff is very high on, but Igor did not get here until the end of July. So he didn't even have the benefit of the full summer practice. And as Jimmy mentioned, the pack line defense is tough for anyone to master in any period of time, but particularly in a matter of months. I mean, Tony's usually had the benefit of having guys learning it while not playing a lot. And then their moment comes, you know, and they're capable of doing it. This is kind of an experiment in, in speeding everything up and accelerating learning curves and trying to get all these new pieces to mesh very quickly. So uh, it's, a, it's a heck of a challenge for the coaching staff. You know, for me, uh, I go back to kind of the motto in Tony Bennett, I trust Jim. like like in, and why shouldn't we? I mean, here are the numbers over the last eight years, 117 and 28 in the ACC. Coach K, 101 and 45, 16 games, 16 and a half games uh, worse. Roy Williams, 95 and 49 over that stretch, which is over 20 games, almost 22 games worse over that period. That's insane. Like, that's insane. If anybody can figure this out, and again, last year they weren't great. Virginia fans killed me for it when I didn't have them ranked high. But I saw them. I saw them in the bubble. And I didn't think they were that good, to be honest. I thought they were like, okay, but a fringe top 25 team. And that's really what they were at the end of the day. Can this team be better than that? If, if all the stars align? Because, again, I, I feel like Tony Bennett in a normal year, you have it. You have that advantage. You've got an elite level coach compared to some other programs that might have more talent. I'll take Tony Bennett over those guys any day of the week. Yeah. I mean, it starts there, right? I mean, he's a hall of fame coach. He's been successful everywhere. He's been three years out at Washington state and now what 13th year uh, coming up here at Virginia. Uh, you made a really interesting observation. I think, Five of those last eight years, Virginia either won outright or tied one year for the ACC championship, uh, regular season championship. So uh, he's got a system in place and having those guys work together uh, to learn that system allows them to be competitive. And so, uh, you know, where does that translate at the end of the day? I mean, I think you know, I hate to say it, but, uh, you know, Duke and, and I think Virginia Tech are both going to be really good this year. Uh, and, and then, and then um, but, you know, how, how we gel uh, as the season goes on, we could, I could see Virginia being a top five or a top three team, even depending on how the other teams develop. Well, that's the thing is like Tony said it, you know, the league was down last year. Coaches never admit that, by the way. Like, I think he's the first one I've ever heard actually say the league was not very good last year, comparatively speaking. It's not going to be like it was last year again, Jeff. I mean, Duke's probably going to be Duke again, you know, with, with this kid, Paulo Bancaro. And Louisville is going to be better than they were. They may not be great, but they're going to be better. Virginia Tech, as Jimmy said, like, they're going to be good this year. Um, Carolina should be better through the transfer portal and, and older guards. Where do we see this Virginia team? And I know we're, we're throwing darts here, but uh, where do we see them finishing in the ACC this year? 
I mean, I would, I'd be shocked if the team did not finish, you know, in that top group, maybe not at the top, but whatever the top third or so, um, you know, I, I think it's a fascinating season to me because Tony is as competitive as they come. And by no means is he writing off this season or looking at his rebuilding, but you know, you look at the roster and everyone on the roster would be eligible to return next season. Hmm. So they're kind of looking at this. I know they're looking at this as kind of a two year deal while not writing off this year. It's kind of a case study of in today's climate with the transfer portal and people leaving, you know, can you keep a group together for two years, which is a modest goal. Like we're going to keep this group for two years. It's not like you're saying we're going to have them for four years together, but you know, I think they look at this as a team that, you know, can do some things this year, but if they stay together and you bring guys back and then you add a recruiting class, then, you know, maybe you take off. And, you know, I think Mike Bray was the one who coined that phrase that, you know, the goal is to get old and stay old in college yep. basketball, or at least for programs like Notre Dame and Virginia. And, you know, Virginia's always had, Tony's kind of had the benefit of having old veteran teams. This one's different in that regard, but you can see that if the core of this group stays together, then next year you have that veteran group that's been through the wars together. Um, You know, like I said, they're not writing off this year, but the reality is this is not a team that, you know, necessarily is going to lose 80% of its scoring again. Jim, What's the key if this Virginia team is to do what they've done over the last seven of the last eight years, which is, I think, finish first or second um, in the ACC? What is the key to them being able to do that again? Well, gosh, I'll I'll go back to what Tony said in one of his early years. You know, this team's going to have to learn how to lose together before they can learn how to win together. And and what I mean by that is not necessarily, oh, they're going to lose a lot of games, but it's an it's a unknown entity to a lot of people. And, and you know, if we're, if we're fortunate, we can put fans back in the stands, and we don't know how some of these guys might perform uh, once they turn the lights on and, and playing together. But I think chemistry is really important. What I like is if the shot's not going down, you still get you still give yourself a chance if you play hard and you're tough and and that's a consistent theme over that eight years of Virginia basketball. It's, man, they just don't they're not going to give up easy stuff. And I see this team uh, being being tougher and 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 playing harder than than what you saw from last year. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm not writing this team off. I know, as you said, Jeff, this is this is kind of a two year plan. That's that's the hope. Um, I'm not sure they're good enough, talented enough to win the league this year. Um, but again, I'm not betting against Tony Bennett. I'm, I'm, I'm far smarter than that. So I appreciate you guys taking some time. Uh, Jeff, Jim, breaking down Virginia. And uh, hopefully we'll see uh, another year of, of uh, the Cavs somewhere in, in the NCAA tournament. And who knows, once you get there, you never know what's going to happen. So thanks for joining me, guys. Thanks, thanks Jeff. Jeff.